the question is simple identify the fracture see uh, i always tell you how to approach an x-ray of the fracture of the distal end of the radius this has been important and this has been coming for a while now so currently you can see a fracture you can see an x-ray it is in the distal end of the radius for sure so whenever you see a fracture like this your first job is always to you know identify that uh, you know uh, whether that fracture of the distal end of the radius is extending into the joint line or not so what i'm trying to tell you here is that you have to see that whether this fracture of the joint line is extending into the uh, fracture of the distal end of the radius is extending into the joint line or not and i'm sure you guys can very well appreciate that this fracture line is actually not only extending but communicating uh, with the distal radial articular surface there is a small breach there so if this is a fracture of the distal end of the radius which is extending into the distal radial articular surface i'm sure you guys can very well presume that we will call it an intra-articular fracture that is inside the joint fracture of the distal end of the radius now I'm sure you all are aware of it that this is ulnar steloid. I'm sure you all are aware of it that this is radial steloid. And I'm sure you guys can see a discrete radial steloid bony fragment. Now, uh, I'm sure you are aware of this fact also that scaphoid is a bone. The term comes from the word scapho. Scapho means boat. So you have this boat shaped bone. I'm sure you can see the shadow in the lateral view. So if this is your scaphoid, which is a boat shaped bone, and this is your distal end of the radius, guys, uh, do you see that there is any distortion in the anatomy between the radius and scaphoid? No. The boat and the base are well fitting into each other. So if I have to say this fracture, I will say it out loud that fracture of the distal end of the radius, yes. Extending of the joint space, yes. Intraarticular, yes. Anna? Intraarticular, yes. Extending into joint space, yes. With radial styloid bony fragment, yes. There is a discrete radial styloid bony fragment. With intact radioscaphoid joint anatomy, yes. There is intact radioscaphoid joint anatomy. So what is the name of this fracture? Schofer's fracture. Also called as Hutchinson's fracture, right? This is what is called as Schofer's fracture. This is what is called as Hutchinson's fracture. This is what is called as Backfire's fracture. So all these names are, uh, you know, given to this. And if you will be asked about the definition, this is an intra-articular fracture of distal end of radius all right of d e r of distal end of radius with radial styloid with radial styloid bony fragment with intact radio scaphoid joint anatomy I hope that makes some sense to you all right so this is your question and this is your answer so answer is chauffeur's fracture let's talk about the second question my personal favorite match the following types of physial injuries according to the salter harris classification so you know they have mentioned five types and on the other side they mentioned five names and you have to do the match the following see there is no point in getting confusion here it's just that you are supposed to remember this mnemonic uh, of this entire topic see i'll tell you don't worry listen to me carefully <clears throat> see when we talk about physial trauma there is a classification given for physial trauma which is called as salter and harris classification of physial trauma so when you about there is a classification given that is what is called as Salter and Harris classification of physical trauma. Now that Salter and Harris classification of the physical trauma divides physical trauma into five types. Type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The mnemonic is very simple. You can remember it by the name of Salter. S-A-L-T-E-R. Type 1. Sorry, type 1 is S. Now when I say S, what does that mean? It means it means straight across so the injury will be straight across what 
अरे व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक फाइसिस ट्रॉमा सो इंजरी विल बी स्ट्रेट अक्रॉस व्हाट फाइसिस सो टाइप 1 आई शो इट टू यू दिस इज टाइप 1 यस द इंजरी इज स्ट्रेट अक्रॉस द फाइसिस यस दैट इज व्हाई आई सेड एस स्ट्रेट अक्रॉस द फाइसिस समझ आया आफ्टर टाइप 1 वी हैव टाइप 2 S A L T E R mnemonic assaulter A A बोलो तो अबाउ What is above physis? What is the topic? Physical trauma. It involves what? Physis. So A is above above what? Above physis. What is above physis? Metaphysis. You will see a. I'm sure you can see. You will see a triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone. Can you see that? So you will see a triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone. and this triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone this triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone that you are looking at here this triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone is what is called as thurston holland sign triangular metaphysical fragment of the bone is what is called as thurston holland sign so this is basically type 2 and you have to understand that this is about what this is about physis so what is it going to include the metaphysis the classical example is supra condylar fracture humerus the classical example is supra condylar fracture humerus so this triangular metaphysial fragment of the bone is thurston holland sign it is basically into type 2 and also one thing i want you to remember that this is the most common type hmm. coming back to the mnemonic salter is straight across a above l lower lower to what physis what is lower to physis epiphysis so this is an injury whatever i'm going to tell you next it is an injury in the physis which is going into what epiphysis i'm sure you can appreciate it is an injury of the physis extending into the epiphysis or in other words you can say extending into the joint also so this is type 3 next you have type 4 so s straight across a above l lower so alter te te is together what is te through everything are through everything means what through everything means through epiphysis physis and metaphysis so through epiphysis physis and metaphysis so this is basically type 4 now this type 4 is the second most common type always remember so this type 4 is through everything it is second most common type example one should know fracture lateral condyle humerus so salter s straight across a above l lower te through everything r r bullet to rush mm -hmm. crush so this is type 5 which means completely crushing injury to the growth plate you can see the crushing injury to the growth plate and i will typically now tell you that this type 5 is usually associated with what fall from height whenever there is a fall from height the body weight goes down the ground reaction force gap and physis gets a kajuber salad so this type 5 is the type which has the worst outcome and not only the worst outcome i want all of you to know this as well that this is the least common type all right so these are the five types and i hope that makes some sense to you now after the second question let's come down to the third question oh sorry we forgot to answer the question so what is type 1 type 1 is type 1 is slippage of the growth plate what do you mean by so basically is is our match kar gaya what do you mean by type 2 so type 2 is thurston holland sign ye match kar gaya then what do you mean by type 3 type 3 was physial fracture extending into epiphysis what do you mean by type 4 injury of necessity since it is through everything it has to be operated so operation is compulsory that is why we call it injury of necessity since the injury is through everything then you have uh, another type that is type 5 type 5 is crushing injury to the physis so technically ye aise ban gaya ki a a is 
B is 4, C is 5, no? D is 2, and E is 3. So let's take a look. A1. There is one option of A1, another option of A1. Then B is 4, B is 4, C is 5, C is 5, D is 2, E is 3. So answer is E. Is that clear to all of you? Now moving over to the next question. All of the following are included in Femistress Triad except. Abhi bada interesting topic hai. Femistress Triad. See, Femistress Triad is something that is taught to you in radiology as well. I hope you remember. So Femistress Triad hota kya hai ki uh, this is a radiological triad to be precise. Thik hai? So Femistress Triad is a radiological triad okay x-ray based triad for many tubercular condition but precisely we use it for tb you have to understand my point femistress triad is something that you can use for many conditions <clears throat> i mean it's not compulsory that you use it for uh, tb hip but yes you can use it for many conditions Okay, many conditions, tubercular condition, but mainly we use it for TB hip. The first thing that happens is juxta articular, juxta articular osteopenia. Juxta is adjacent, articular is joint. So just adjacent to the joint, the bones will develop osteopenia. The second thing that you will see will be peri articular erosion. So you will see a lot of erosions around the joint. The third thing that you will see will be reduced joint space. So these are the three classical things of the triad. So one thing which is categorically not seen is subchondral sclerosis because it is a, uh, categorically it is a feature of the osteoarthritis of the knee that I want all of you to remember. Previous All India question, uh, named question, Jude view, whether it is Jude classification, whether it is Jude view, they are used for fracture of the establishment. So whether it is Jude view or Jude classification, we use for fracture establishment. Which of the following is not a feature of the Coley's fracture? See, you have to understand just one thing that as far as displacements in Coley's fracture is concerned, as far as displacements in Coley's fracture is concerned, just remember the mnemonic DILS. D I L S DILS. Now D stands for dorsal. D stands for dorsal. I stands for impaction. L stands for lateral. L stands for lateral. S stands for supination. Alright, so D is dorsal. The displacement is dorsal. I means impaction. L means lateral. S means supination. These are the displacements. So uh, now lateral displacement is radial displacement. I agree. Hana? So radial displacement is lateral displacement. So nothing new. Dorsal we have discussed. Supination we have discussed. You cannot have a volar tilt. Because volar tilt is classical for Smith's fracture. That is the identification feature for Smith's fracture. All right. Now, all are true about chronic osteomyelitis except, see, you have to understand that the pathological hallmark, that the pathological hallmark for chronic osteomyelitis is sequestrum. Now, what is sequestrum? I'm sure we all are aware of it. It is a dead bone. It is a radio-dense bone. It is an ischemic bone. It is a necrotic bone. It is an unhealthy, non-viable, non-vital piece of bone. Okay. Now the next point is that it is surrounded by reactive, immature. It is surrounded by reactive, immature, subperiosteal new bone. And that subperiosteal new bone, reactive bone, is what is called as involucrum. All right, that is what is called as involucrum. It is, it always floats in pus. Always remember. 
it always floats in pus because it is lighter than pus always remember it sinks in water that's a fact but normally it's a it's a it's a lighter bone it's not a heavy bone it has no sign of life in it mot ho chuki hai saddi ki to ye tairti hai bas theek hai so there is a reactive new bone formation yes there is a cloaca in an opening yes this involucrum has an opening this involucrum has openings called as cloaca through which pus and dead bone exudes out now many people think that cloaca is a opening in the parent bone no cloaca is an opening in the, so you have a sequestrum here you have an involucrum here okay this is sequestrum this is involucrum so these are cloaca they are not an opening inside the parent bone they are an opening inside the involucrum so this is true this is true sequestrum is a dead bone true sequestrum is a heavy bone no it's a lighter bone question number 7 which of the following is not a correct match very simple you have central grooves this is a the hemp pin and i'm sure you all are aware of it that this is the most common implant for skeletal traction this is the most common implant for skeletal traction in cancellous bones for example calcaneum so it is the most common implant used for application of skeletal traction in cancellous bones like calcaneum that is the hump pin next is steenman pin you can see one end is blunt the other end is pointed usually it is 4 to 6 mm diameter it's a complete solid pin and i'm sure you all are aware of the importance of steenman pin this is the most common implant this is the most common implant for application of skeletal traction in young adults so it is the most common implant for Uh, application of skeletal traction in young adult overall it is the most common implant the third one is tension band wiring absolutely it is tension band wiring bottom line is that it converts it converts the distraction forces into compression forces in hindi we call it duriyon ko nazdeekiyon mein tabdeel karte hain it converts shearing forces into compressive forces classical indication fracture olecranon another classical indication fracture but these are two classical indication this is tbw no this is certainly not kunchers near this is a rush pin or a rush nail all right this is how do we identify one end is curved another end is pointed so this is first of all obsolete we don't use it now plus it was used for intramedullary fixation at one point of time it was used for intramedullary fixation of fracture of ulna and fracture of fibula all right so this is not rash this is not kunjar nail this is the answer kunjar nail is different it's a it's a intramedullary nail which is used for fracture fixation of tibia and femur developed by kunjar and uh, the no clover leaf shape and many things are there okay one liners most common skull bone fracture is temporal bone it's not frontal it's not occipital it's not parietal it is temporal that is true most common facial bone to fracture is nasal bone true many people they mark the answer as zygomatic beta it is nasal followed by zygomatic most common is nasal followed by zygomatic most common site of mandibular fracture is not symphysis it is not angle it is not ramus it is subcondylar area particularly neck of condyle most common facial bone to fracture is zygomatic i just told you that it is nasal followed by zygomatic it is not purely zygomatic so answer is d this is not true so i think there were eight questions only yes